In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the most powerful question in the world for improving your performance. If you make a habit of asking yourself this question, particularly in the right times and in the right ways, it can transform your life for the better, faster and more dramatically than any other single change you could possibly make. Of particular interest, this question is the key to eliminating bad habits. In my 10 years of being a professional men's coach, I've seen this question lead to more breakthroughs than anything else. And those that I ask this question to, their breakthroughs are often accompanied by a stunned silence, a deep sigh of relief, a bout of laughter, and more than a few times, even a breakdown into tears. My name is Mark Quepit, and today I'm back with another episode of the Frontline Man series. It's all about helping you eliminate escapism and unleash your apex potential. Now, really quick, I just want to let you know that I'll be releasing a brand new free guide in the next little bit where I'll be taking a deeper dive into the process of how to eliminate low value escapism from your life, like porn, video games, internet scrolling, junk food, etc. So you can become the most productive and fulfilled version of yourself. If you want to get this guide, just pause this video and make sure you click the link below to get on the wait list. You don't want to miss this. So back to the most powerful question in the world. In order to set the stage for unveiling this question, let me tell you a little story about how I discovered it. Okay, so back when I was first starting out as a men's coach, I would often find myself getting stuck in coaching sessions where I felt totally lost in how to help my client. There was one time in particular where I had a guy who was in a fairly difficult situation. Okay, he was like a, he was addicted to porn, which went against his moral and religious beliefs. And frankly, it tore him up inside. And to make matters worse, his relationship with his wife was pretty terrible. In part, this was due to like his own absence in the marriage, but it was also because she was struggling with medical conditions that took sex off the table. And he felt totally trapped. Because even if he managed to quit porn, he was still stuck facing a complete lack of intimacy that hurt him to his core. And there was no true guarantee that this situation was with his wife was ever going to get fixed. So like a perpetual dead bedroom and divorce were real possibilities for this guy. And like I tried all of my standard coaching tools with him. You know, I was trying to help him be more optimistic, create a vision where things could get better. Uh, I tried to help him troubleshoot his issues and make plans, all that kind of stuff. But it seemed like the more I tried to offer him help, like the the more stuck he would become. It was like all my uh, all I did when I was coaching him was just help him become more aware of how screwed and helpless he felt. And I remember one time, like in the middle of a session with this guy, I was like panicking because I felt totally lost. It's like, man, I'm just, nothing is working here. Uh, and I had no idea what the heck to do to get this guy unstuck. And so out of desperation, I said to him, well, hey, man, all right, let's say everything truly is as bad as you think. Like, what do you want? And it turns out, what do you want was the magic question. He went silent for a little while, and then I heard, like, on the other side, uh, because I didn't even do Zoom back then, it was all phone, I heard, like, what sounded like stifled sobs, you know, he was starting to cry, and eventually, like, with a cracked voice, he he said, I just want to feel loved, and that was the breakthrough we were looking for. You see, once we understood what he wanted, we were able to work toward that thing. And what he wanted most wasn't porn. It wasn't even to be free from porn. It wasn't even sex. He wanted love. And for this particular guy, when he said that, he was looking for love from his wife. But what we discovered was that since we couldn't directly control that, um, we, we had to really start with himself, with getting love from him. Let's talk about self-love here. And instead of quitting porn as a moral obligation, this insight, which we gained through asking him what he wanted, um, we realized that instead of quitting porn from like a place of like moral obligation, he started doing it as a loving gift to himself. And he finally started to make some progress. And instead of getting bitter at his wife or grasping at validation from her, which always just ended up making things worse, we came up with an action-oriented game plan that had him taking steps that gave her an opportunity to love him. So, you know, he stopped acting like a victim. He started sharing himself in a positive and generous manner. You know, he's taking, you know, charge of things, being a leader and, you know, reigniting connection with her by taking her on dates and things like that. And so eventually he quit porn and fixed his marriage. And, it, you know, to be completely honest, it took some time and it took some work, but the whole process was ignited and guided by continuously asking the question of what do you want? 
And as we stuck to this question, not only did it help him uh, figure out where to aim, what to work on, but it also helped him really understand who he wanted to be. And personally, for me, this was a breakthrough as a coach. Anytime I felt lost or stuck in coaching someone, I just would pop that question out of like, well, what do you want here? <laughs> and sometimes this led to massive breakthroughs like it did with this previous client. And then other times the client just said, I, I don't know. <laughs> but through the years of using this question, I, I learned the art of where it was most effective and powerful uh, to, to generate the best results. And so the probably the biggest insight I gained was that when you ask, what do you want? It has a major impact on your relation to escapism. You see, escapism is never what you truly want. That's what makes it escapism, okay? Uh, that's what you're, you're running away from what you truly want. Like that guy I was just telling you about, he didn't want porn, but he used porn to cover up what he truly wanted, which in his case was a desire for love. And while love might be the ultimate thing that we all search for, that's not always really the thing that you're looking for in that moment. So, for example, let's say you've got a bunch of work you want to get done, but you're filled with a craving to scroll the internet, watch TV, or generally just distract yourself with anything other than the work. So, in that moment, when a craving comes up, like, you know, to escape comes up, like, is like, what do you really want there? What do you really want to be doing? Do you really want to be escaping? Almost always the answer is no. <laughs> what you really want is to maybe like get the work done or maybe you want to feel confident the work is going to go well or maybe actually you don't want to work. You just want a break, but like a real break, not just scrolling the Internet. OK, maybe what you want actually is that you want your work to mean something. You know, maybe you feel like you're just doing something that has no purpose and you're just serving some arbitrary corporate bottom line and you want your work to have meaning. The point here is that the underlying desire can be any number of things. You just need to discover the true desire and work with it consciously if you want any chance at overcoming escapism and achieving satisfaction. So the way you get started down this path is by practicing what I call the heart shift in moments you crave escapism. The heart shift is a simple technique, right? and it's really only a couple steps. You just first, you want to take a deep breath. You notice that you're filled with the desire to escape you. <sighs> Take a deep breath, okay? And then you want to bring your attention kind of out of this swirl of, you know, negative emotion and craving and that kind of stuff. You want to bring your attention down into the center of your chest, what I call your emotional core. This is where we feel our emotions. This is where all our neurons for emotionality, or at least most of them, are found. And then into that part, you want to ask, what do I want? And then you just translate the feelings that come up into words. The purpose here is to get beneath that immediate desire for pleasure and see what it is that you're really looking for. This deceptively simple process can lead to some incredibly important realizations, but you don't need to just take my word for it. So for those of you who don't know, a few weeks ago, I launched the very first Frontline Man cohort on eliminating escapism, and over 50 guys joined up. It's awesome. It's been going really, really well. Um, and in the first week of that cohort, I had guys ask themselves uh, this question in, in conjunction with this heart shift technique of tuning in, okay? And they asked themselves, what do I want in these moments that they were triggered to escape? Here's some examples of what happened. I'm not going to read them all word for word, but you can pause the video if you want to. But I'll give you the, the high-level overview here. A very common realization was that many guys reach for escape when what they really wanted was a break or to be productive. So they either did the work they were avoiding or they took a break to recharge. Another big pattern was guys desiring connection. So one guy realized that, you know, he was missing his wife and daughter who were on vacation. And instead of escaping, he used that desire to clean the house because, you know, he was thinking about his wife. Like, oh, I really want to connect with my wife. My wife's not here. But you know what? What would make her really happy is if I did, you know, I, I cleaned some things up here. And so what he did was he went from craving escape, which was triggered by missing his wife and daughter, to connecting with that feeling and then he decided to go clean instead, and he ended up cleaning the house, and he felt like great about it and getting some other chores done. Another guy processed some deep pains he had around his parents and was moved to tears about his desire for repairing that connection. And he would have never seen that if he had just gone through with his escapism, and now he's on a path to, to really start fixing that. Uh, this guy, he got triggered when he found out that a woman he was interested in was already in a relationship. But in doing the heart shift, he realized what he really wanted was respect and a sense of purpose, 
which I thought was really interesting. Another guy realized that in addition to wanting to get more movement in, he also wanted to really spend some time just like connecting and holding his wife that evening. Now, it's also not uncommon to uncover bigger realizations that might require a more dramatic action. So, for example, in the process of handling a craving for porn, this guy realized that he actually just wanted to quit his job. <laughs> and he understood that maybe he couldn't quit that job right now, but that's something that he can incorporate and start working on over the long run. And if he knows that he's working toward that, well, then his desire to escape will go down. He'll be able to show up better and hopefully make a you know transition to something that he really likes a lot more. Now, this guy I thought was particularly interesting. He took things really deep and he got to the core of what he wanted around his tendency toward lustful desire. So basically, he discovered that when he holds his sexual desire consciously, it's a powerful drive for creativity, expression, and purposeful living. But when he fails to hold it consciously, that desire turns dark and it turns women into objects to extract pleasure from. So what was what I, why I thought this was really neat is because that principle there, that's the foundation of like sexual transmutation. And he stumbled upon this naturally through just simply connecting to his dot desires and really spending some time thinking about them, which I, I think is really super awesome. And what's so cool about this heart shift and this question of what do I want is that you'll find that sometimes simply just coming into connection with your desires can make you feel valued and understood. And that alone, even if you don't have any solutions, it makes you feel a lot better and it reduces the desire to escape. I saw a number of guys mention this as well. Now, obviously, connecting with your desires, it's not the same thing as fulfilling those desires. But you can't get to the fulfillment until you first understand what you want. And so here's my assignment for you. Anytime you are triggered into escapism this week, Practice the heart shift where you take that deep breath, <sighs> calm down, connect to the center of your chest and ask yourself, what do I want? What do I really want here? And what I would love for you to do is let me know what you discover in the comments below. We're going to be taking all of this much further in future videos, but connecting to your true desires is the first step for living on the front lines of life. So if you got value from this video, then please like, please subscribe, and then make sure you turn on notifications so you get the next videos in this series. If you want deeper systems for eliminating escapism and unleashing your apex potential, then make sure you click the link below and be on the wait list for when my new guide drops. So I'll see you in the next one. Ooh, yeah.